ಸಾಪಕಾಯ ಧರ್ಮಸ್ವಿಣೆ ಸ್ಥಾಪಕಾಯ ಧರ್ಮಸ್ವಿಣೆ ಅವತಾರವರೆಷ್ಠಾ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯತೆ ನಮಃ ಅಸತೋ ಮಾಸದ್ಗಮಯ ತಮಸೋ ಮಾಜೋತಿರ್ಗಮಯ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ಮೃತಂಗಮಯ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಲೆಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಫರ್ ಅವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ದ ಎಂಬಾಡಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆರ್ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ಸ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಗಾಡ್ ಇನ್ ಕಾರ್ನೇಟ್ ಹೂ ಕೇಮ್ ಟು ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಲ್ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಪ್ರೇ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ ಟು ಲೀಡ್ ಅಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದಿ ಅನ್ರಿಯಲ್ ಟು ದಿ ರಿಯಲ್ to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge to lead us from death to immortality today's subject serve the living beings as shiva what is very important is that human life is given with a special purpose the purpose is to realize our true nature but then though that purpose the though that purpose is well defined yet people are not directing their mind in that direction on account of various reasons as a result people get into all types of difficult situations problems and sufferings in life but everything in this universe has got some purpose even difficulties also do have a purpose that purpose is that we should learn a lesson through our suffering we should try to purify our mind through sufferings sufferings come to purify us but then we should have the capacity to bear the suffering many people succumb to sufferings thereby entering into more suffering so the only way is face the suffering with all courage and boldness and in that state of utter helplessness one should see within it is rain opener well people by their actions 
in worldly ways tend to become more and more selfish more and more jealous so because of these bad qualities people tend to lose their humanness they degrade themselves from human level to the animal level instead of rising from human to divine they degrade themselves to lower state it is said in our sanskrit literature paropakaraya phalanti vrikshaha परोपकाराय वहन्ति नद्याः परोपकाराय दुहन्ति गावः परोपकारार्थम् इदं शरीरम् इट्स अ ब्यूटीफुल वर्स ऑफ विजडम सी सिंपली क्राइंग अबाउट डार्कनेस विल नॉट रिमूव डार्कनेस ब्रिंग द लैंप ऑफ लाइट darkness will go immediately in the same way we must acquire knowledge we must aspire for knowledge aspire for spiritual knowledge spiritual wealth which is the real wealth the real treasure which gives immense peace happiness and prosperity also spiritual prosperity is the highest prosperity well every spiritual verse has got tremendous significance in this particular verse it is taught sacrifice is most essential in serving humanity without that sacrificing nature you will not be able to do service properly you will have to have some kind of character formation unless a person is well charactered he will not be able to render service properly for example many times national calamities occur wars disease floods famine cosmic uh, disturbance disturbance on a wide scale but then how people behave during that crisis for example we have recently tsunami havoc devastating millions of people have died and then there is infinite scope for making service for rendering service there are people who help for this cause wholeheartedly throughout the world people are happy to help in the service activity but then you must know this is the time to loot the money because lots of people send money funds and selfish people are there they're waiting for this to grab so one has to be very careful unless a person is well character he will not be able to render service properly so this verse teaches us a lesson paropakaraya phalanti vrikshaha 
the tree never partakes its own fruit it sacrifices by passing on the fruits to others paropakaraya vahanti nadyaha the running river doesn't drink its own water it sanctifies its very presence by providing drinking water to others paropakaraya duhanti gavaha the milking cow does not take its own milk but gives it for the benefit of others for the nourishment of others likewise paropakarartham idam shariram man should share with his fellow beings his natural qualities like morality truth and integrity we are born out of this mother earth prithvi devata in fact there is a hymn in rigved prithvi suktam adoring the mother earth worshiping her praising her the tree yields fruit because of the nature acting it is prakriti's play the clouds bring rain to give water that sustains life it is the sun's rays that manifest and blossom the entire organic world and sustain human life it is mother earth that once again demonstrates her quality of sharing the five elements to the rest of mankind five elements agni apaha teja and vayu these are the five elements and space having been born here on earth growing here we have forgotten the very lesson that mother earth offers to us our true value doesn't consist in introducing ourselves as i am a christian i am a muslim i am a buddhist i am zoroastrian etc the highest value latent in a human being comprises in declaring that i am a human being that is the highest value all are human beings the greatness doesn't lie in the caste or creed all religions merge in the divine effulgence ultimately just as all the rivers join the ocean same way all religions point to the divine the welfare and happiness of the individual depends on the welfare of the society when there is welfare and peace in society then only the individual can experience peace and happiness man needs three important capabilities the first and foremost is that there should be spiritual transformation after spiritual transformation comes social change then comes the individual transformation there will naturally be social change with spiritual transformation the individual will shine and blossom with radiance when there is peace and welfare in society how does it take place at the individual level every individual has got some bad desires and habits it is the bad habits of the individual that spoil him and the company around by these 
bad habits not only the individual suffers but also the entire family is brought to ruination the day when the individual gives up all those bad habits his individuality will truly blossom we should have morality in order to express our individuality individuality in turn will blossom in you have morality individuality is submerged because of the bad habits then what is that social change we should all be away from the social evils there are so many social evils accusing others blaming others making fun of others feeling jealous about others and so on we have lost peace in society because of these bad qualities of man you don't find anyone who is acceptable to everybody in society people live with so many ideas as the heads differ the thinking also differs we don't think of the demerits of, of defects when there is friendship but we think every act as a mistake when the friendship doesn't last or sustain when we are together when there is love whatever you do is bound to be good but when we separate every liking turns hateful this is the effect of modern day it's not good we should develop divine feelings at all times therefore we have to foster good qualities in society we have to foster qualities of helping others so to do service we should develop sacrifice tyag we should have the spirit of equanimity a feeling that others suffering is our own suffering then there will be a spiritual change compassion mercy love forbearance sympathy all such noble qualities originate from spiritual transformation love of god is our natural state love for god is our heritage when you have love for god naturally you will have fear of sin today there is no fear of sin at all we find people engaged in cruel actions what's the reason they have no fear of sin he can perform any action only when all five fingers are together he can't act if they are drifted apart we should be one this is a piece of cloth it has a number of threads it is strong because the threads are interwoven if you separate the threads you can cut it off with a finger therefore unity is the true strength and source of happiness you can achieve anything with unity you should also set an ideal for your life every man should know that he is born to achieve an ideal that's what we just chanted the verse paropakarartham idam shariram the body is gifted why not to indulge in selfish and brutal ways the body is gifted to render service 
You must have the spiritual attitude and service becomes sanctified. It uplifts you. Let this body be put in the service of humanity. This body is meant for helping others. So, it follows, we should develop that spirit of service. It is said, again I am taking a Sanskrit verse, Hastasya Bhushanam Danam Satyam Kanthasya Bhushanam Stotram Karnasya Shastram Most beautiful verse, very significant meaning. It means, it is not the anklet that is the ornament for the hand. It is only the sacrifice. Dhanam, Bhushanam. Hastasya Bhushanam Dhanam. Give. Charity, there is the ornament for the hand. Bhushanam Dhanam. It is not the necklace that is the decoration for the neck. Truth is the ornament for the neck. It is not the ear rings, but sacred listening that adores the ear. We are losing such valuable jewelry. We have to protect and preserve them. The world is so vast, so you, sh you too should have broad feelings, you should never be narrow-minded. That is true life. The need is for expansion of love and not contraction of love. Then only there is value attached to your devotion. Devotion doesn't mean doing simply bhajans or doing just good actions. They are all different components of devotion. Devotion demands pure love, selfless service is a true jewel. So, here comes the most modern saint who gave most wonderful philosophy of service and that is Swami Vivekananda. His most essential message to the world is serve the living beings as Shiva. Atmano moksha artham jagadhita yacha. Do you want to have peace of mind? Do you want to liberate yourself from the prison of this world? Do you want to overcome all sufferings in life? Then Serve the human beings. Serve all the beings. But when you are serving, you must have the attitude of divinity. Serve them as manifestations of Lord Shiva Himself. That is Shiva Jnane Jiva Seva. Shiva Jnane Jiva Seva. The whole, that attitude changes the whole purpose of life. The purpose of life is well directed in right direction if you have this attitude. With the attitude of seeing God in everyone. So the invaluable mantra, Shivajnane Jiva Seva serving every being as the full manifestation of God. 
how did she how did vivekananda got this mantra who gave him it is shri ramakrishna it is shri ramakrishna's message came through vivekananda to the world in order to fulfill this message of shri ramakrishna swami vivekananda established ramakrishna mission the most important activity of ramakrishna mission is serving humanity so that most wonderful mantra swami vivekananda got it from shri ramakrishna swami ji had developed a peculiar sharpness of perception and assimilation that empowered him with peculiar power to pick up the gems from the talks of the master he could see the deep meaning in the words of shri ramakrishna even though the master told them in very simple language he never told them in a bombastic way never as a preaching gradually swami vivekananda was assimilating the tips and hints about practical vedanta that could be put into individual and collective life in the society in 1884 once shri ramakrishna was sitting in the room surrounded by the devotees including swami vivekananda in the course of conversation arose the topic of vaishnava religion shri ramakrishna began to explain the essence of that doctrine he said the doctrine teaches that one should always be careful to observe three things namely a taste for god's name you must love it you must like it you must love it intensely secondly kindness to all beings and thirdly service one should have the conviction in one's heart that conviction is very important without conviction you can't proceed you can't upgrade your life conviction is very important and you must have right conviction so here swami ji is pointing out what type of conviction we should have one should have the conviction in one's heart that the whole universe belongs to krishna the divine supreme and therefore one should have compassion for all beings this conviction must be firmly rooted in everyone sri ramakrishna intervened to correct the word compassion for all beings shri ramakrishna suddenly went to ecstatic state in his partial consciousness shri ramakrishna began to speak talk of compassion for all, for beings compassion for beings insignificant creature that you are how can you show compassion for all beings who are you to show compassion who are you to bestow it no it is not compassion 
but service service to the beings as shiva all went on listening to those words of shri ramakrishna spoken in that ecstatic mood but none could detect and understand their hidden import at that time it was only vivekananda who was narendra at that time coming out of the room at the end of master's ecstasy narendra declared with a loud voice oh what a wonderful light have i got today from the master's words what a new and attractive gospel have we received today through those words of his wherein a synthesis has been effected of sweet devotion to the lord with vedantic knowledge which is generally regarded as dry austere and lacking in sympathy with the suffering of others whenever shall i get the opportunity i will preach this wonderful doctrine of shiva gyane jeeva seva serving god in each living being later some week and actually put this mantra into practice there is there is an instance after his return from america around 1898 swamiji had acquired a land for the construction of shri ramakrishna temple at belur where we, we can see now most famous belur temple of shri ramakrishna wherein hundreds of monks live together spreading the message of shri ramakrishna's gospel of service swami vivekananda was not keeping well he had gone to darjeeling hill station for rest meanwhile an epidemic of plague broke out in calcutta there was panic all around people were running in fear leaving calcutta many people died and there was no one to take care of the sick or dispose of the dead bodies it was a very terrible heartbreaking situation the news reached the broad hearted swami vivekananda immediately he returned to calcutta and he ordered all the members of belmat to get busy in the service and care of the affected and some of the monks who are novices they would not understand this great significance of service and they said shri ramakrishna had never told us social service our main aim is to seek the god and do sadhana some wake and the thundered at them and said my brothers have you forgotten the mantra of our master shiva gyane jeeva seva that's the mantra shri ram ka uttered by serving human beings we are serving the highest expression of the god on this earth love the lord in these suffering patients i appeal to you 
to come forward in this calamity and serve the living god all the sanyasins were stunned to listen to these powerful words of their leader and many of them saw the truth therein but still some people said oh swami from where the money would come swami ji immediately answered money if need be sell off the bedroom mat the money thus gathered would be put to the service of these people i care not for home or shelter for ourselves we are sanyasins and we have taken the vow of poverty tree shade would be our roof and a loin cloth would be enough for us to cover our bodies so swam vekanda engaged all the monks household devotees of shri ramakrishna in the service of the affected the british authorities in their report of on the epidemic had recorded that due to this timely help from the belur mat mortality was less and moreover the epidemic was brought under control much quicker because of the immense help rendered by the ramakrishna mission so swam vekanda gave this philosophy of service the scope to become unselfish is very vast from individual to family from family to province from province to national and from national to international level unrestricted vistas are open for every person to express inherent unselfish nature everybody has got that selfless nature only they should try to express it we name this self expressing quality as evolution in ethics not i not i but thou but thou in fact nature forces us to become selfless in spite of our selfishness at biological level and brings up the hidden spiritual dimension to our personality it brings out necessary refinement in intellect to sharpen the reason and leads us to intuitive realization of virtue of selfless behavior and attitude but this process is very slow and calls for conscious and deliberate efforts on the part of the individual as well more a social structure can exhibit such conscious trends better is the ethical growth seen in it philosophy of service is closely linked with moral and ethical social code it is a two way exchange to become selfless one has to engage in service and more a person becomes selfless the more the person enjoys serving others the process is part of nature whether one is willing or not every person per force has to fall sooner or later in line with unselfish pattern of behavior aided by the compulsions of social organization the individual as a unit further accepts ethical dictates that force him to share both pleasure and pain with others joys he willingly accepts but suffering he refuses to share 
the social ethical code comes through judiciary to warn such selfish persons to part away with some of their wealth comfort and other privileges for example in olden days i don't know in modern times in all the transportation buses there would be sign boards inside seats 5 to 10 are reserved for ladies this may be cited as an example of legal compulsion that makes the society follow such norms this is the beginning of pronunciation as well once i was uh, when i was in belmont there was one swami ji who asked me to come with him i went with him in a bus howra so overcrowded bus you can't even stand on the footboard people may fall such a terrible a bus which would carry 40 people would carry 100 people myself and uh, the swami ji we were inside the bus and sitting at some bus stop some ladies entered already people are standing there inside the bus there was no sitting accommodation at all but the ladies have entered where do they stand where do they sit swami ji immediately cautioned me silently get up quickly in telling that he himself got up first which made me automatically got up <laughs> and swami ji invited those ladies please take the seat that is the that's the way you have to get it off selfishness be always helpful serviceable so swami ji says this is the beginning of renunciation as well as is how do you learn when this is the case is it not desirable to try voluntarily to become selfless instead of following the signs it lessens the friction and struggle with nature the fight is the fight an individual is sure to lose with this with this ruthless adversary social structure might appear to be objective but is in fact a subjective compulsion we can interact with our near and dear ones smoothly in an attitude of humility and gratitude only if we refuse to see the other as an object and accept the person as a subjective extension of our personality subjective extension is very important the same principle is applicable to all fellow human beings in a society they are not objects to be exploited but subjects of our worship subjects of our worship then there are grades in service history records names of only those who have had made themselves broad in heart by serving others by realizing them as their subjective extension the concept of ideal social order ramrajya is the highest realization of this concept of renunciation and service willing engagement in selfless act is called as service service to others includes need based active and proactive aspects 
when a neighbor is ill and is taken to the hospital it is a need based service to construct garden and playgrounds is an example of active service and to struggle to make the downtrodden aware of the dignity is a proactive service see how many grades in service the person who struggles for the last kind of endeavor is the most respected person and indeed might sooner or later be worshiped as god depending upon the cultural tradition the person is born in mahatma gandhi ji baba saheb ambedkar they can be mentioned as examples although such persons of high character are born in every country and in every era still higher but not well recognized or accepted grade of selfless service falls under the category of spiritual awakening in the heart of masses such persons have the knowledge of divine nature of every soul or being and therefore they bestow a serene and benevolent influence of peace and bliss all around while well, raja ramohan rai may be categorized as one of the greatest social reformers in india india has ever produced swami vivekananda can be called no way this should be seen as an attempt to denigrate someone but the facts are there for everyone to see we are interested in reasons behind such trend and factuality and the reason is that while well, one was a proactive reformer pertaining to the matter of social the other was proactive reformer pertaining to the field of spirituality such gradation is necessary to study the philosophy of selfless service and its varied outcome depending upon which what underlying concept one bases his work and expends energy due to reasons inexplicable or which we need to which we need not to go into details at this time such spiritual reformers are grouped under the honored category of religious persons or godmen probably because it is easy to put them at a bay that way history is replete with such wonderful men of spiritual realization who in turn have inspired many others to undertake social reforms through selfless action shri ramkrishna is the basis of all creative actions undertaken by swami vivekananda and now millions in turn are being influenced to undertake selfless work in the footsteps of swami vivekananda serving god in every human form is a service at its best it glorifies the human as a divine and dignified being and is the most rational and effective way to eradicate many social evils and differences differences there is no need to link such persons of spiritual knowledge and convictions born out of such realizations to religion the world that is unfortunately shunned nowadays as a poison would be under the name of secularism service comes out of the fullness of heart out of overflowing love sympathy and pity these are its sign surely the service that swami vivekananda did to the world came out of his intense feeling for its miseries and in this he surely did not differ from shri ramakrishna 
for Sri Ramakrishna also felt as keenly, if not more, for the suffering humanity. Sri Ramakrishna's sympathy was not at no, was not of a passive kind. It is intensely active. There are several instances in which Sri Ramakrishna himself actually engaged him in famine relief work. Sri Ramakrishna persuaded his devotee Mathurnath Vishwas, son in of Rani Rasmani, to feed starving people, give them clothes. And in one instance, Sri Ramakrishna told Madhurnath to remit their overdue rents. When they are in utter distress, when they don't have any income, how can they pay rent? Wave them. Wave the rent. And there is also the more important fact that the advent of such godmen into the world is solely for the welfare of mankind. There are many among the followers of Sri Ramakrishna who look upon him as divine incarnation. Apart from its feasibility, this claim implies at least that none of his followers deny that the life of Sri Ramakrishna was fully dedicated to succor of mankind. A service is traditionally looked upon as the impelling motive of divine incarnation. It is therefore superfluous to discuss the origin of Swami Vivekananda's service. But difficulty arises as soon as we come to the doctrine of service. The doctrine of service signifies that service is a method of self-realization as potent as the well-known methods of bhakti, jnana, yoga. Of course, the doctrine of service is no innovation of the present age. It has been known for long ages in India as karma yoga. But it is a fact that Swami Vivekananda has laid special emphasis on this in his teaching. In his program of work, which he bequeathed to his monastic order, the India and the world at large, and in the spiritual discipline that he instituted for the training of his followers, the doctrine of service occupies a preeminent place. He held it to be essential and specially suited to the present age. It is said that in the early days of the Ramakrishna order, after Swami Vivekananda had returned from the West and many young men had joined the monastery, one of his disciples often advocated Karma Yoga as a special message of Swami Vivekananda. This emphasis, however, was considered wrong by other disciples who thought Jnana, Bhakti, etc. to be more intended by the Swami. In order to clear the point, Swamiji was at last approached. Swami Vivekananda admitted that he held Karma Yoga to be the special requirement of the present age. The question is whether this Karma Yoga doctrine of service was endorsed by Sri Ramakrishna. Did Swami Vivekananda derive it from his master or from other sources or from his own mind? The problem is made real by the doubt that has been expressed about the endorsement of Sri Ramakrishna. It is said that Sri Ramakrishna did not ask those who came to him to take service as a means of self-realization. There are instances on the other hand in which he repudiated it. The argument that Sri Ramakrishna's own acts of service and his injunction on some of his disciples to help mankind are themselves proof of this, proof of his support is not good enough. We must remember that Sri Ramakrishna and his disciples were men of self-realization 
which they attained through means other than karma yoga that is to say by spiritual practices proper men of self realization are free to do whatever they like their example may not be followed by novices what is true of the men of wisdom what is true of the men of wisdom may not be true of the ignorant therefore the mere example of shri ramakrishna and his disciples does not warrant the inference that shri ramakrishna preached with the doctrine of service we shall have to find other evidences it is true that even an ordinary man is capable of sympathy and to that extent of service and that therefore there is no difference of kind but only of degree between shri ramakrishna and between shri ramakrishna and any novice in this respect and that if sympathy could be motive enough for service with shri ramakrishna it also may be such in regard to a novice but is there only a quantitative difference between our sympathy and shri ramakrishna's sympathy shri ramakrishna strongly repudiated the idea of daya sympathy and his and mercy his own actions were inspired by love and not pity though like pity they apparently looked until we realize the divinity in man it will not be possible for us to make take up the attitude of men like shri ramakrishna we look upon sufferers primarily as men they consider them primarily as god the angles of vision are diametrically opposite the similarity between their and our sympathy for mankind is only apparent the position of these world teachers has been nicely described by swami vekananda though in a different connection in these words swami ji said any one and every one cannot be an acharya that is teacher of mankind but many many become liberated the whole world seems like a dream to the liberated but the acharya has to take up his stand between the two states he must have the knowledge that the world is true or else why should he teach again if he has not realized the world as a dream then he is no better than an ordinary man and what could he teach therefore shri ramakrishna's example is not proof enough that swami is doctor of service is derived from shri ramakrishna we must find other justifications anyway finally after discussing this matter thoroughly they were convinced that the philosophy of service is also the message of shri ramakrishna given to humanity through swami vekananda all people cannot spend time in meditation all people are not fit enough to practice yoga but many people can certainly practice karma yoga what is most important is to have firm conviction that karma yoga is meant for purification of the self and then it paves the way for liberation so the whole purpose of religion is to purify the mind purification of the mind is the toughest part in spiritual upliftment so we have to take all steps to see how the mind is pure from is freed from all impurities and karma yoga done in a proper way not only purifies our mind but also it leads us towards 
the realization of the divine within you will be able to see god's presence in the whole universe and you will realize also the whole universe is being played upon by god only we are, we will arrive at the truth when we perform our duties properly in a selfless way so swamiji's message is very significant we have just observed swami vekananda's birthday what is most dear to swami vekananda is serve the humanity forget everything about yourself give your whole life for the service i take care of your liberation these are the words of swami vekananda you one life for me i take care of your future life so let us have this attitude to serve the living beings as manifestations of lord shiva himself let us try to practice this ideal given by swami vekananda and evolve spiritually thank you very much we have sri ramnam sankirtanam on saturday february 12th february 12th is most auspicious day on that day we have swami brahmanand ji special worship swami brahmanand who is here in the altar just below the upper level his birthday we are celebrating and that day is also the birthday of swami tribunathi tananda so brahman ji used to like ram naam very much in fact it is brahman ji who introduced ram naam in all our mission centers which should be done on every ekadashi day in all our centers in india particularly on every ekadashi we do ram naam sankirtanam in the evening here we are doing second saturday of every month generally we do ram naam sankirtanam and this time it so happens we are doing ram naam sankirtanam on the day of swami brahman ji's birthday which we are celebrating swami brahman ji used to see when the ram naam was being done he saw hanuman sitting and listening to sri ram naam sankirtan it ha- it happened in uh, our center in madras in chennai then he called the members of the math and said look i saw hanuman ji sitting and listening to ram naam and from that day onwards swami ji said all our center should do ram naam every ekadashi day like that so the program begins morning at 10:30 bhajans brief talk and special worship we have got another program as usual in our temple site near lemont we have a program morning at 11 o'clock with bhajans geeta chanting and vedic chanting so you are cordially invited to participate in all these programs and happy to announce to you that we are having platinum jubilee celebration vedanta society chicago complete 75 years and we are planning to celebrate in a big way in ganges in michigan state where we have got facilities to conduct such big programs so try to contact our office and uh, be present for that occasion the platinum jubilee celebration will be held on june 24th 26 24 25 26 
2005 friday to sunday so all the swamijis the heads of centers in america are participating and swamiji from uh, belur mat pramayananda ji the manager of belur mat ramkrishna mission is expected to come swami Chia, swami uh, swahananda ji the head of our uh, vedanta center in hollywood he will give keynote address so it's a very rare occasion for all of you to meet all the swamis and have their blessings and you will enjoy it surely so try to bring all your friends to the takishan om sahana bhavatu sahana bhunaktu sahaviryam karavavai तेजस्वीनावधीरमस्तुमाषावै ओ शातिशाति हरि ओ तत्सत मे जी लॉर्ड प्रोटेक्टर्स मे ही नरिशस मे यू नॉलेज बी फ्रूटफुल एंड इन नॉट इन मे वी नॉट हेट ईच अदर पीस 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 बी एन टू हाउ